In March 2020, the world witnessed something new. A swarm of Turkish drones rose over Idlib, Syria. In a single night, they destroyed tanks. They wiped out radars. They even struck Russian-made air defenses. Western analysts watching the live feeds were stunned. Turkey had just fought a war without sending pilots into the sky. What began with embargoes back in 1974 had now transformed. It evolved into the world's largest army of armed drones. And by 2025, even America, once the undisputed leader of air power, was forced to admit the truth. Turkey had built a system it could not easily match, from the deserts of Syria to the seas of the Mediterranean, from testing grounds in North Africa to the battlefields of Ukraine. Turkey's drones were rewriting the rules of modern warfare. But the real story was deeper, because buried in this rise is one secret program, a project so advanced, so ambitious, that it could tilt the balance of global air power forever. And in the next few minutes, you'll see exactly how Turkey built it, why America is now scrambling, and what this secret really means for the future of war. In 1974, Turkey faced a harsh lesson. After the invasion of Cyprus, the United States placed an arms embargo on Ankara. Suddenly, Turkey's supply of weapons and spare parts stopped. Tanks stood idle, jets sat grounded, and commanders realized the danger. Dependence was a weakness. If foreign powers could cut the flow of weapons, Turkey's security was never safe. From that moment, the seeds of self-reliance were planted. It took years for those seeds to grow, but the lesson was never forgotten. Through the 1980s and 1990s, Turkey searched for answers. By the early 2000s, the direction was clear. Unmanned systems were no longer experiments. They were becoming the future of war. Ankara made drones a national priority. Two names rose to the front. Turkish Aerospace Industries TAI and a small private company, Baykar. While other nations imported technology, Turkey quietly built its own. Baykar's workshops were small. Thai's resources were limited, but the vision was larger than the budget. Step by step, they moved forward. Engines tested, frames adjusted, prototypes shaped. This wasn't just about creating a new industry, it was about survival. Every drone designed was one less weapon Turkey had to beg for. Every breakthrough meant freedom from embargoes. By the early 2000s, Turkey stood on the edge of transformation. The question was no longer whether it could build drones. The question was how far it could take them. How did simple prototypes evolve into combat machines that would shock the world? By the early 2000s, Turkey's drone dream began to take shape. Two programs stood at the front. From Turkish Aerospace Industries came the Anka. From a smaller workshop, Baker unveiled the Bayraktar TB2. The Anka was a sign of state ambition. The TB2 was the promise of private innovation. Piece by piece, they moved from blueprints to airframes, from test stands to engines, from concepts to flight. And in 2014, the breakthrough came. The TB2 took its first flight. It was small, it was light. But it worked. For the first time, Turkey had an unmanned system it could call its own. And by 2015, the transformation was real. Turkey now had its first armed drone fleet. This was more than technology. It was a shift in how wars could be fought. For soldiers, it meant something new. No longer did every mission demand a pilot in a cockpit. Machines could now take the risks. Human lives could be spared. Each drone was an eye in the sky. Each strike was delivered without risking a crew, but a question still hung in the air. Would these drones actually work in real battle? Could machines survive where tanks burned and jets were shot down? The answer would not come in labs. It would not come in hangars. It would come in war, because the next chapter for Turkey's drones was the battlefield itself. So what happened when Ankara unleashed them in Syria and Libya? By 2016, Turkey was ready to test its new weapons. The Bayraktar TB2 left the hangar and entered the battlefield, first in Libya, then in Syria, and the results shocked the world. In the skies over Idlib in 2020, the TB2s moved in swarms. They struck with precision. They hunted armored divisions from above. Tanks were destroyed. Artillery was silenced. Even advanced air defenses were torn apart. Drone eyes spotted the targets. Drone-guided artillery fire finished the job. In a single campaign, an old truth was broken. Heavy armor was no longer safe. For decades, tanks ruled the ground. But now, small unmanned aircraft made them burn. Analysts gave it a name. They called it the world's first drone war. And they were right. Because the battlefield had changed. Steel and fire were no longer enough. 
Machines with cameras and precision bombs ruled the day. Turkey had not only built drones, it had built a doctrine, a new way of fighting, one that mixed low-cost drones with smart munitions and artillery. And this doctrine was not just noticed in Ankara. The whole world was watching. From generals in Washington, to defense ministers in Moscow, to soldiers in Kiev, everyone saw the same lesson. The era of drones had arrived, but one battle would turn the Bayraktar into something bigger. Not just a weapon, but a global icon. What battlefield carried the TB2 from a Turkish project to a worldwide legend? In 2020, a small war in the Caucasus changed the future of warfare. Azerbaijan and Armenia clashed in Nagorno-Karabakh. On paper, Armenia had the advantage. It had Russian-made tanks. It had advanced surface-to-air missiles. It had artillery dug deep into the mountains. But Azerbaijan had something different. It had the Bayraktar TB2. The drones took to the skies in swarms. They hunted tanks hiding in valleys. They struck air defenses that once seemed untouchable. They silenced artillery batteries that had held the front for years. Within weeks, the balance shifted. The TB2s crippled Armenian defenses, and they cleared the way for Azerbaijan's advance. Cheap drones were beating million-dollar tanks. Low-cost precision was crushing high-cost systems. For the first time, nations saw the math of war change. Why spend billions on jets and armor when drones a fraction of the price could destroy them? The lesson was brutal, and it spread fast. Suddenly, every country wanted the TB2. From Eastern Europe to Africa, from NATO allies to rivals of the West, orders poured in. The drone was no longer just a weapon. It was a brand, a symbol of victory. But as contracts piled up and militaries took notice, another reaction began. This time in Washington, because the U.S. military, long the master of the skies, was forced to admit the truth. A rising power had built a drone America could not easily match, and that was the shock that mattered most. In 2022, Russia invaded Ukraine. The world expected a quick collapse, but then small Turkish drones entered the fight. The Bayraktar TB2 ambushed Russian convoys on open roads. It struck fuel trucks. It destroyed tanks. It even helped target a Russian warship in the Black Sea, and the whole world saw it happen. Videos of burning columns and shattered armor went viral. On phones, on televisions, on every platform, the TB2 was no longer just a weapon. It was a symbol of resistance. Songs were written about it. Ukrainians celebrated it in the streets, and American policymakers took notice. For years, Washington had restricted drone exports. The idea was to prevent proliferation, but those bans created a vacuum, and Turkey filled it. While the U.S. held back, Baykar expanded. Dozens of nations signed contracts. Hundreds of drones were delivered. By 2023, even Washington admitted the mistake. The Pentagon and State Department rewrote their export rules. They moved faster to approve sales of American drones, but the shift was clear. They changed because of Turkey. The TB2 forced the United States to adjust its strategy. The wake-up call had been delivered, and the question now was bigger. By 2023, how large had Turkey's drone empire become? By 2025, Turkey had done the unthinkable. It became the world's largest armed drone exporter. Nearly 65% of global sales traced back to Ankara. No other nation came close. Baker drones were flying in more than 35 countries from Eastern Europe to North Africa, from the Middle East to the Caucasus. And at home, Turkey fielded over 200 TB2s of its own, an entire fleet ready for war. This was no longer a national project. It was a global empire. Wherever conflicts burned, Turkish drones were there, in deserts, in mountains, above coastlines. They flew wars that America did not control, wars that Russia could not fully dominate and wars where Turkey became the key supplier of air power. The impact was clear. Even nations that once depended on US or Russian systems turned to Turkey. It was cheaper, it was faster, it worked, but not everyone accepted this rise. Sanctions came. Western governments tried to cut off parts, engines, optics, critical components that drones required. Yet the campaign failed because Turkey adapted. It built new supply chains. It sourced parts elsewhere. And where it could, it built its own. Instead of slowing down, sanctions only made Turkey more determined. By 2025, the lesson was undeniable. Turkey had beaten the embargoes of the past, and it was now beating the sanctions of the present. But how did Turkey really overcome those barriers? How did it keep drones flying when key parts were blocked? 
How did it beat sanctions on optics and engines? Sanctions once tried to stop Turkey's drone rise, but each barrier only pushed Ankara to build more. When Canada cut off optical systems in 2020, Aselsan stepped in. Within months, it built domestic cameras and targeting units. When Rotax engines came under scrutiny, Turkey shifted again. Local power plants replaced the blocked imports. Each sanction failed. Each ban only strengthened Turkey's independence. By 2023, the breakthrough was undeniable. For the first time, Turkey launched drones from its new carrier, the TCG Anadolu. The Bayraktar TB3 made its first naval sorties, a drone designed not just for land, but for the sea. From runways to flight decks, Turkey proved it could project power beyond its borders. This was no longer just defense. It was dominance at sea. A nation once blocked by embargoes now sailed with drones taking off from its own carrier. The world had seen drones on trucks, in deserts, in fields. Now they were flying from the decks of warships, and the signal was clear. Turkey had joined the ranks of true naval powers on its own terms, but this was only the surface, because behind the TB2s and TB3s, another program was moving in silence. A secret project so advanced it could shock even America. In 2022, a new shape rose into the sky. It was the Kızılelma, Turkey's first jet-powered drone. Faster, heavier, deadlier than anything Ankara had built before. A year later, in 2023, Turkish Aerospace unveiled the Anka 3, a stealth flying wing, dark, angular, built to slip past radars. These machines were not ordinary drones. They were loyal wingmen designed to fly beside manned fighters. They were stealth bombers that could carry heavy payloads. They were carrier-based strike platforms ready to launch from the decks of the TCG Anadolu. For the first time, Turkey was not just catching up, it was leaping forward. From importer to innovator, Turkey had rewritten its destiny in two decades, and the emotional high point was clear. The nation once blocked by sanctions now commanded the skies. That is why the United States is shocked, because the world's largest armed drone army no longer belongs to Washington. It belongs to Turkey, and the lesson spreads far beyond Ankara. If Turkey could achieve this in just 20 years, what stops other nations from overtaking America next? Turkey turned weakness into strength. It turned an embargo into an empire. Today, the United States still fields the world's most advanced air force. But in drones, Turkey now sets the pace. From the deserts of Syria to the skies of Ukraine, its machines shape the battlefield. The race for the future is no longer about who flies the biggest jets. It is about who can build, adapt, and dominate with unmanned power. Subscribe for more untold stories of how nations are reshaping the future of war. Do you think Turkey's drone dominance will last, or will America strike back?